thank you, first of all, for demonstrating the technology on fish. Yeah, <laughs> I'm a fish bias. <laughs> but my question is, um, don't you don't you want to do those specimens from different angles? How would you plan to do that? The crayfish are going to be a, a tougher one to do. I mean, the way I see it now, just laying out and turning on over to get the underside. But I mean, we have to acknowledge we're not going to, with the time constraint, we are not going to get the quality of images that are going to be useful for taxonic groups and used by taxonomists. I mean, that would require, for crayfish, for example, or pulling out the genitalia, get the image of the genitalia on the underside. We'd like to do that. Just like for bile bugs, we'd like to pull out two or three individuals from each of the vials and they lose one image of those. But we're going to have to trade off some. And so, just real quick, at one time we were going to try, I thought you were going to try to work with specimens in the box or the labels in the box. Yeah. They're still talking about that. And again, the general reference the engineers, when we broached that subject, they were very excited about. Figuring out the refraction algorithms yeah. to get that curvature, <laughs> to get that information. It's it's it, we haven't talked about it. I mean, once once this thing is running, I think it's going to be easier to take the label out of the jar. If you're already into the jar, pulling a specimen out, it's not going to take any longer to, to, to pull the label out and flatten the, the label. Out. If the label's curved, you know, put two heavy weights down and, and flatten it out. Is that is that? Be edited without it, you don't want to be managed easily. So, I, we haven't really gotten back to getting it in the jar. Yes? In that vial, the dry stuff is in the vial, how does it occur to the image of the vial effect? Dry specimens in the bottles? Yeah, if you have a dry specimen inside a vial with a label that's inside the vial, yeah. you're going to end up taking that sort of specimen a lot, and you're going to pull out the data. Yeah, that's um, the, one of the videos that we've got on the website now. They basically design um, basically racks that you put the vial in and basically lay it down as best you can. You can put that on a flatbed scanner, and they're still getting, they said they're getting the image information around the edges of the vial. Is it going to yeah, Is it going to work for all labels? Of course not. I mean, there's exceptions to all of it, but they said they're getting it. And, and I've got to deal with that very soon because I've got a large collection.
TCN will will have support. I mean, this this thing is over engineered. It is built like a rock. Those pole, I mean, those braces are aluminum. They're carbon fiber rods. Um, it seems very solid. I would be more concerned from the software side of running it. Something not working. And I mean, there's going to be problems. I mean, this, this whole thing is there's going to be a huge learning curve getting this up and running. This is the first time it's been attempted. Um, yeah. Yeah, there's going to be issues. As far as the, the hardware, besides the problems with the camera or the lens, and iOS, and this is what, 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 what where is that? Yeah, yeah. <coughs> yeah you know, I think the speed of how fast you might have to do it. But they really, like, you know, over engineered this thing with very solid components. Does the Internet team plan to visit each of these institutions to help get the camera up and running? We are going to basically pre assemble the units for each institution. We're going to order all the supplies in bulk, pre assemble them, and I think they're going to come if they can and pick up the unit um, from us, or if they can't. They say we'll, we'll be able to ship it in parts, and it, you know, each of the braces will have the motors already assembled with rear drives and just put it together. Again, what's user friendly to, to you and I is quite a bit different than to the people who have designed it. Now, I mean, 
it's like it's like the auto detect feature on a flatbed scanner. Yeah, no, it's that easy. The technology is so easy to, to take the individual units out of that big picture. And then you can take a PNG file and put it into Photoshop, Photoshop. and just crop out each one if you want to do it that way. Yeah, no, you're going to have to do it man manually, or you're going to have to no, do it be an auto automated system. That will be automated also. Right in the middle. And then one more question. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> so you got, I mean, this is. We're cutting in March now. <laughs> yeah, that's right. <laughs> so, like, in terms of exposure, when you got, so you got a, a dark fish on a white background. Yeah. If on that same pan you had a silvery minnow yeah. on the white background, does the, does the system uh, you wash you out the white, uh, you know, the... Well, these, these were both taken on the same suite. So you can set that exposure. You can do all of it with the user interface, just like you were using, you know, uh, Photoshop with the raw image. Um, <clears throat> so it doesn't adjust. You, you manually adjust. The you can manually adjust. Based on yes. the yeah. Right. Yeah. I mean, there's going to be lots of cases like that. But I mean, this was a really white garter. Turned out okay. And right. The sisters was really dark. And so you find that have medium. But that's yeah. open air, right? You don't have that black in. It's no. It's just out of hand. But I mean, there's. I mean, everybody can alter it as they see fit with how they put their specimen out. I mean, you can put them under water if you want to get yeah. out of the glare. Oh, just for one thing, the glare or whatever. Yeah. Or not being in some liquid. It's really good, and that's because LEDs do come in from all four sides. But, I mean, I mean, there's smart people in here. You guys, if you can figure out a better way to lay your specimens out to, to make it a better image, go for it. Two, two more questions, and we'll go to Mark. You and you. So, for example, for the herps, we're going to try to do for all our primary types, and we're going to try to get six angles, just for the primary types. For all the other stuff, I'll probably just get a dorsal and a ventral. But for the primary types, I'm going to get as many angles as I can, and it's going to depend on the characters that are diagnostic for that species. So when we're taking shots of the primary types, and we only have 180, you can get a shot of the superlabial scales on a lizard. That's one of the characters that you want somebody to be able to. The idea for the primary types is that people who can't have access to them, because I won't mail them to, you know, they can get everything they need. And you can do that for the subset of the primary types. The rest of the stuff, then you're going to pick representative samples and just take either a dorsal and a ventral or maybe just a dorsal. Because the intent is not to be able to, it's out of the question is to take pictures that you allow you to make a positive ID on everything. That's never going to happen. Right. But it, in, in the Herbst case, because you got herbs the way they preserve, you got so much more three-dimensional shape to them. Why wouldn't you just put them on a turntable and do a 3D scan of them? That's, of, that's been in a discussion with these guys. That's oh, one of the things that we want to do is see if there is a <laughs> if there's an alternative to manually put posing these things to get all of those shots that you need for the ID. One more question? Yes. Uh, comment or observation. If you, as you mentioned here, are going to handle some of these out of the jar, and especially handling them consider what we've worked on in the pressure of the labels you showed. If they're a nice label, which is to say kind of tight, very usual, um, consider a very standardized protocol for where you ask the person to take the picture to put in the same place in the photograph orientation every time so that you can use easier algorithms to yeah. use things like OCR yeah, that. so that they know exactly where yeah. you need to place on the label and they yeah. know that you need more fish. And we, I mean, I guess it sounds obvious to some people in here, but then the other people where we've seen examples where they, oh, we didn't think that. Or we might have to turn a little bit with the background that you use for understanding that that's going to affect uh, your OCR are not going to be very precise about where you put the image. That's a good point. 